pie. Mike, can you give us the scoop or give me he wants? Not all of us. He wants the scoop just himself. <laughs> uh, the scoop with recruiting on linebackers that FSU might be interested in. Well, there's there's a lot. And I think if you go to our list, um, I'm pulling up right now just to see. I mean, there's tons of linebackers that are going to be there. Their top ones, four-star linebacker Joseph Phillips making his first visit to FSU. Linebacker, four-star linebacker Peyton Pierce is another one. Javante Waller, another one, uh, four-star linebacker. I think I think right now I will cover that in depth as far as I have a hot board that I, I've already finished. So that will be in depth that you'll see that as far as uh, when that hot board is released as far as the linebacker. So that's coming up. I don't want to give away every single target thereafter, but I think it's, I think it's going to be a, a very extensive list as far as I would say around – you know, the net's going to be around 12, you know, linebackers that they're going to be active with. So I think I want to wait and see and let that thing tell it, but I will go into detail with that and you'll certainly get all that in there. I just don't want to give it all away and just in our, our chat. So, um, but certainly it, it will be on there. Where is that in terms of needs, do you think? I mean, how much attention do you think the staff is putting on addressing linebacker right now, Michael? I think it's one of their major needs. I think they really want to, to nail this down. Obviously, last year they got Blake Nicholson, DeMarco Ward, and then a late pickup from the Texas linebacker. Um, but I think uh, this year they really want to boister that that depth of what they have. And two, they know uh, they're going to lose some guys after, after this year more than likely. Uh, you know, as far as to draft or, 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 you know, graduation or whatnot. But I think it's a big need that, of what they really want to do. That's why I think you have such a wide net of, you know, talented linebackers on there. I think you're going to see, I think it's going to be a much bigger, uh, you know, board as far as what you see as far as top guys. I think there's going to be a lot of guys in there. A few of them have already visited FSU. Zaquan Patterson, who really, raved about FSU. He's a deep, he's a safety slash linebacker. That's certainly high up there. I think you've seen a few of them. Edwin Spillman's visited FSU. Um, I think, I think you'll see a lot more. Like I said, it's probably like around 12 guys that they're going to be heavily involved with. And uh, you're going to see a lot more than what you saw, I think, as far as the visit pattern of a lot of top linebackers being on campus, both for the 24 class and 25. So I definitely think it's one of their their major needs that they will really want to boister that linebacker group. Percent chance Florida state has a top 10 class. Uh, he asked Michael, Joey, I don't do percentages that much. I'm not big on percentages because they can be, you can, you can do them subjective. If I, if I do percentages, I will say, I do think they're going to get a top 10 class. That's my opinion. My opinion is I think it will be a top 10 class. Um, that's what I feel. Uh, outside, I'm not going to give you a percentage, but if I'm telling you, I think that then obviously I have some reasons and some Intel behind of why I think that I think the season in general, what they did last year and the recruiting buzz that I haven't heard in an extremely long time, uh, regarding FSU, there's so much excitement. Um, obviously it's a roster that is probably, one of the most complete I've seen them have uh, since that year they won the national championship. It's a very complete roster. I think they still have a few spots where they want to finish it off. But I think, um, I think overall, I think it's going to be a top 10 class when based on the things I just covered of the product on the field and then the relationships, the way they do relationships and the way they connect with these recruits. It's there's a reason they're getting all these elite guys and it's not just relationships. It has to do with what your product is and, and there's a lot of recruits that are sold on FSU. They they believe it. Like, hey, this is a – believe it or not, this is a top 10 team. I mean, it's kind of – I have to really position myself and remember that, like, yeah, they're good. You know, they're good. They're good program. And uh, job's still not finished. You got to go out there and um, you certainly have to go in there and they're going to have to show the product consistently and not slip up. But I think overall it's – there's this – the excitement is through the roof when it comes to, you know, where this FSU program is going. I mean, this is just what last year people saw was just the start. I mean, I think that's just the start of where, where they're, where they're headed. And I think a lot of recruits see that. All right. Well, to get those high rankings, you need top tier players. Lorenzo Miller is wondering, first off, he says, Hey guys, I'm always watching. Hopefully you're always hitting the like button too. If you're just joining us, everybody hit that thumbs up button. We see the numbers 
starting to tick up here and the people that are joining us is because the people yep. hit the thumbs up earlier and it's pinging it out there for everybody. <laughs> How many top tier defensive ends do you think Florida State will go after this year, Michael? I would say around two or three. Um, by the way, before I get to that, I want to give a shout out to Fishware Brewing Company. They gave me this garnet and gold ale uh, oh, that I'm that. drinking. So I want to give it them. Again. Hold it up again, Michael. Let's get your full screen on this yeah. one. Oh, that's yeah. nice. That's yeah, nice. yeah. So yeah. I'm drinking that right now. Um, I, I I spoke it there, you know, a few weeks before I came back. So um, certainly um, I want to give them a little shout out because they were phenomenal in Jacksonville. So I'd love that. Yeah, I think there's going to be two or three. There's a lot of y'all the good ones. Obviously, Dylan Stevenson, who is coming for the FSU spring game. He's already let me know. Um, he He's certainly a big one. There's a lot of good ones. And, and I'll say kind of what I've said before. I will have a, a detailed hot board when, with the breakdown of, of a lot of those guys. They have a really good defensive end slash defense tackle coming in this weekend, Cam Franklin. He's out of Mississippi. Uh, he visited FSU early in the spring. That's a guy they're they're really high on. They've, they've done a great job with uh, developing relationship. Hard to get kids out of Mississippi, but they're going to they're gonna shoot it. You know, they go for it. And um, certainly JP and a lot of those guys have done a phenomenal job as far as uh, really – connecting with cam and cam seeing what fsu's look like on the field uh that defensive line which i think i think norvell said it best when he said you know he feels like that's going to be one of the biggest strengths of of the team and i think uh certainly a lot of kids are taking notes of what what they're doing on the field and certainly having a guy this kind of quality uh in franklin who i think is going to be a five star eventually i think uh is a big deal but it's not just cam i mean they got a lot of guys so i'd say I'd say around three. I, I, would, I wouldn't even throw the two in there. I think they're definitely going to take three, maybe even extend it to four if they get the right guys. So certainly another position that they want to – they've done really good in the portal, but I think they really want to boister what their young guys are because they have a lot of young guys I think are talented. I love what Patrick Payton's doing. He's He certainly looks really good. and So there's a lot of guys that I think uh, – I think they want to build it around you know what they they've got on the high school – high school uh, or on the, on the transfer portal market. I think they want to sh- showcase that with uh match that with their high school recruiting. I think this year is going to be a big year for their defensive end recruiting. Uh, last year they got Lamont green jr. And certainly that was a big pickup. They added Gilbert Edmond, as I mentioned from the portal, but I think, I think they really want to solidify with some top tier elite guys. So I think uh, this year defensive end recruiting is going to be a big deal for uh, and a big focus for this staff. Lake Cormorant, man, it's up there, North Mississippi. So that's that's really tough because it's like uh, you know, yeah, little Ole Miss, little Mississippi yeah. State wants you, Tennessee. Saw a lot of SEC schools on his wish list, but it's worth it's worth giving a shot, man. Got to go. You can't get them if that. you can't get them if they're not on campus. So I mean, you got them, get them here, and they've got them here, and you know, this is the second visit. This is a multiple visit, so it was, wasn't like oh, you're just getting them for a nice event. He's come here before, so. They got to get. They got to keep getting him on campus, obviously for some games. I'm interested to see what he has to say. If you get him about, you know, four, five, six times around that time, then okay. Now we're now we're getting in the series category. But yeah, you're you're right, Aslan. It will be a tough pull out of Mississippi with Ole Miss and and Mississippi State. I do like uh, these kids. Uh, these young men can name these videos, like you know, senior season highlights, junior season highlights. <laughs> uh, he named this one. I hate quarterbacks. Mm. Junior season film. So I like you gotta that. Lo- you got to love that. Yeah. That's not a liking. That's a loving. If they had a love button, that's what you'd love. I mean, you want your defensive ends to feel that way. So Michael, is there a prospect or prospects, plural, that you think are under the radar? Someone whose skill doesn't match their star ranking? Uh, yeah, there, there's there's a ton. There's always, there's always a lot of them. Uh, you know, we have... You know, even the guy, you know, Juju Lewis doesn't have a ranking yet. Um, so, and he's 2025. So, yeah, there's there's always a ton. I don't think there's like a major target yet um, that I would say, hey, hey this guy, I, guy's under, I was, yeah, there is probably one, probably um, I would go with LJ McCray. I don't know. they He was a three-star. Um, so I think they bumped him slightly, but that's a guy that I'm I'm very high on. I think Camden Friars now only a three star. That's another one that I'm very high on. That's an FSU commit that I think probably should have a boost up higher. It should be a four star, but uh, that would be one that it kind of falls in that category. But I'd say LJ McCray for me 
is is the guy that nobody talks about, but they should. Uh, Al J. McRae out of uh, Mainland High School. He's also visiting this weekend um, for the you know, Legacy Weekend. I think uh, he's he's a big deal. It seemed they bumped him up to a four star finally, but he's a guy I'm very high on. I think Alabama, Florida, both are are heavily involved. I think FSU sits in the, in the best spot. They've done the best job with the relationships and. Uh, he's a guy that uh, has been on campus probably to FSU more than any place. And uh, a guy that I think from the start, my sources and in Intel have been telling me like, hey, this is the guy we want. I mean, we want, we really are pushing hard for this guy. Guy asked me about defensive ends earlier. You know, this is a name that would be high on my board up there with Dylan Stevenson. So I think uh, LJ McCray, even though he is a four star now, I think he's still unheralded as far as uh where he probably should be should be even higher but that's a guy that that pops out to me but there's gonna be a lot of guys uh though on my when you look at my hot board there's gonna be several guys you see in there you know whether no matter position that that you're gonna see their three stars that it speaks to kind of the way fsu covets them i mean you look at a lot of these kids luke chromahook was a three star lj mccray was a three star um, a lot of these guys FSU was on before they were any for their ranking really met, you know, uh, kind of what their recruitment is. Um, so I think a lot of these guys that you see early on, I mean, you should take notice when FSU is after them, even if they're a three star, because a lot of times more not times than not, they get bumped up to, you know, four star status because FSU is so good at evaluating, you know, top skill guys. Do you know what we're doing over and on three, uh, Michael? Are we limiting the amount of five stars we give, or if there's if there's if you're a five star and deserve, we're going to give you five star. Gosh darn it, are we just going to limit? Because right now it looks like there's only twenty, which I I used to like that. I always thought like there should just be a, a cutoff, man. And if yeah. you got to fight for somebody, then fight for somebody and get the guy moved off. But there can't be thirty nine blue chip yeah. guys. Yeah. Just can't, you know, but I don't know. I, I, don't know I think, think in. in it's just my opinion. I think the way they usually do it is in the spring, they don't have, you have only like 20 or whatever you see there. I'm not, okay. it's so small. I can't see. It's 20. It's 20. Okay. So I think it will extend to like 25 and then that's it uh, around probably after the summer, once the season starts, but I don't think it'd be even more than 25. So right now, right. you know, guys like Charles Lester will be a five-star when it all shakes down. Yeah. Uh, so um, but I, I think there'll be up to 25. Um, so for me, for a five star, I agree with Aslan. I think the top 25 players should be five stars and outside of that, forget it. You know, it's like, you have to earn that spot. I don't go below 25 for me. If I'm doing the rankings, I'm only 25 because I want the elite delete and you maybe even cut it lower than 25, maybe 20. Um, but I think you have to, there has to be something that separates the elite from the elite. Now, now on three does do something that nobody else does. They have this thing called on three, five star plus, which I like. It's kind of five stars, but you're also giving them kind of a different level of five stars that, Hey, these guys, and they only pick like three or four of these guys that are in this yeah, category. There's only three right there. I see that. Yeah. Right there. yeah. So I'd like that little nice little added feature by Chad Simmons, Charles powers, whoever's involved with that stuff. I, I like uh, the five star plus thing to add kind of guys that are really, really elite. K.J. Bolden, you see in there, he's going to visit FSU March 23rd. Grew up a big FSU fan, number one safety in the country. So that's another big business. That's what I'm talking about, man. FSU is getting not just, you know, good players on campus. They're getting the elite elite. You don't get any higher than five-star plus. So the fact that FSU is getting these kids on campus speaks really of where this um, – where this – recruitment and recruiting classes going as far as what they're pursuing and what they want. And um, I, I think it, it speaks also just the, the, the job that this staff is doing on the field. That's really capturing the eyes of a lot of these recruits. They want to see it. And I have had the most input and in Intel from high school coaches of kids wanting to see FSU. When's the first home game? That's the thing I get all the time. Like we want to be there. So it didn't matter who they're playing. So it tells you a lot about where they're going and, and what this, uh, how, how quickly the perception has changed from last year. We're going into LSU game. They're like, 
yeah, FSU needs to play good just to impress recruits, just to get them on campus. And now you'll look where they're at. They're coming off a 10-win 10, 10 season. Now recruits are sold, and now the elite elite, they don't even care what games it is. I just want to watch FSU play. Man, Tom's shooting for the moon here. Oh, over <laughs> under five-star recruits they get this year, three and a half over or under. Or how many of the top 32 players, would you? Would they get more than three? I'm going to go under on the three and a half because that's a lot of five stars, dude. Um, but I would say a little bit lower than that. I could see them getting two to three um, in, in the class, but I'm not going to – don't hold a gun to me and say, hey, uh, he's guaranteeing it. But I could see that yeah, FSU getting two and three. And keep in mind, I've already mentioned Charles Lester. I've already mentioned who I think is the top guy that they want, the most coveted guy that I think they want um, that they're involved with. But you also have – you know, Trader, who I've already talked about in several of these commits like Cam Davis and, and Luke Cromahoke, those guys can get boosted up to a five star. So those count just as well. Um, so I could see it getting to two or three. Here, I mean, look at us now. We're, you know, we're, we're like disappointed. If we're like, oh, we're not going to be able to we're not going to get we're not going to get four or five star guys like, man, just think of where they were. Think of where they're going. What staff member do you think has the best chance of finishing in the top 20 as a recruiter this year, Michael? I think you got to put Alex Atkins in there. Um, you know, I've already mentioned, you know, Jason Zandamella, you know, Jonathan Daniels. There, there's several other guys that I think he's heavily involved with that I haven't even covered. There's there's a lot of talented offensive linemen that have visited FSU already in the spring. So Alex will be my first choice. I think – uh I think Patrick Sertain is going to be a guy that I'm going to, you know, is kind of the dark horse that I would put in there. I think he does a really good job communicating, connecting with, with young, young players and young people. And in his, his history of developing players is, is certainly resonate with a lot of these, these kids that you see on campus. I think that guy's a, a big time guy. And I think uh, a guy that gets more, you know, doesn't get as much love or, or got a lot of criticism last year was, you know, Adam Fuller, and I think Adam is a phenomenal recruiter uh, for FSU. He, he's very involved in a lot of these recruitments. I don't know if he'll be matched in and equaled in there as far as, you know, main recruiter and stuff like that. But I think he's got a chance to – he's 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 certainly heavily involved with a lot of these top recruits that FSU's after. So, you know, I can name a lot of these guys on the staff, but if I'm picking a few, those are a few I would pick. 